So the gist of this lesson is if I start with a fraction, what number must I multiply by to end up with the number one? We're talking about any fraction. I'm going to show you how this works. First we're going to look at two thirds. Let's take a look at this pizza. Two thirds of the pizza would be one two thirds of the pizza, right? Now let's talk about how we multiply by three halves. Well before we multiply by three halves we have to look at one half. So here's one half, here's two halves, and here's three halves. So we took two thirds of the pizza and we multiplied by three halves. How much of the pizza did we end up with? We actually ended up with the entire pizza. That in, in essence is taking two thirds and multiplying by three halves to give you the whole pizza back. Let's look at another example. If I start with three fourths of a pizza, so here's one fourth, here's two fourths, and here's three fourths. What number must I multiply to end up with one? Well, again, we're actually going to multiply by the flipped of three fourths, which is four thirds. So how do you rep represent four thirds? Well, a third of a three fourths would just be this piece, which is actually a fourth. But if I do all four of those, two, three, four thirds, I end up with what? I end up with the whole pizza again. And notice all we're doing is we're multiplying by the flipped version of the original. If I start with 5 eighths and multiply by its flipped version, so if I flip this around, I end up with 8 fifths. Let's show this on the pizza again. 5 eighths of the pizza would be 1, 2, 3, 4, five. Now if I take a fifth of that, it would just be, this would be one fifth of the five eighths, right? But if I take eight of those fifths, it would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And we end up with the whole pizza again. So, this works for any size pizza, and in general, it works for any fraction. If I flip, if I multiply by the flipped version of the fraction, I end up with one. Let's take a look at a negative example, which is a little bit more complicated. We're going to look at negative three fifths on the number line, which is right here. So I would hop one fifth to the left three times. One, two, three. Okay. Now we're going to multiply that by the flipped version of that, which is five over negative three. And first of all, let's, let's, let's just look at one third of the negative three fifths. One third of the negative three fifths, I'm going to use purple, would be here. But negative third of that would be taking that away. So we'd actually be, see this is one, two, three. But we'd actually be taking it away, so we end up here. And if we do that five times, that would be the one, two, three, four, five over negative three multiplied by negative three fifths would end up at the number one. I meant to use red there. So therefore negative three fifths times five over negative three also gives you one back. Again that was a little bit more complicated but that would what it would look that would be what it would look like on the number line. Let's take a look at two thirds. All right, th imagine this is a cup of water, okay? So we're gonna start with two thirds of the cup of water. So there's two out of three parts. Now if I just take a half of that, that would just be this, it would be two-thirds times a half. But if I take the two-thirds and multiply by three halves, that would be one, two, three. And end, up, end back up with the whole glass of water. So that would give me the entire glass of water. We can also look at kind of like a mathematical proof or mathematical way of showing this just using numbers. If I take seven halves and multiply by the flipped version two sevenths, let's look at what would happen. We'd have seven times two on the top and two times seven on the bottom. Seven times two is fourteen. Two times seven is fourteen. Any number divided by itself is one. This would also work for negative numbers. We have two times negative nine over negative nine times two which gives us negative eighteen over negative eighteen which gives us one back. And in general if I have a over b and I multiply by the flipped version b over a, I would have a times b on top, b times a on the bottom. a times b gives me ab, but guess what? b times a, remember we, the order in which you multiply doesn't matter, is also a times b. And I have the same thing on top as I do on the bottom, so the answer would be 1. This is 
another example of the multiplicative inverse property. Before we looked at just taking a whole number and multiplying by one over that whole number, but it also works for fractions. So if we start with a over b and we flip it and multiply by b over a, we end up with one. And the way that some people look at this, which is fine, is the a's, uh, the a on the top and the a on the bottom cancel, and the b on the top and the b on the bottom cancel, and that gives you one. That's called cross multiplication. But in general, it works because of what I just showed you. If you take a flat fraction multiply by its flip flipped version, it will always give you one back. All right, so let's look at some actual official examples. If I take now, it should be easy to you. If I take seven eighths and multiply it by the flipped version eight over seven, what number do you think that'll give you back? If you said one, you are correct. Seven eighths times eight sevenths gives you one. And anytime you're struggling with this, you can go back and look at the visual examples to help solidify the concept for you. How about this one? If I take pi over 2, what number must I multiply to give you 1? Well, notice that the, kind of the shortcut, what you understand why this is true, is just to flip this number. So what's pi over 2 flipped? If you said 2 over pi, you are correct. All right, let's look at another example. What number must I have started with if I multiplied by y over x to give me 1? Well, again, you must have started with the flipped version of this in order to give you 1 back. This is the multiplicative inverse property, right? So what's the flipped version of y over x? It is, whoops, that's wrong. I need to change that. Let's just write this in together. It is x over y. So x over y times y over x, the flipped version, gives you 1 back. Glad I noticed that mistake. OK. How about this one? Negative a over b times b over negative a. Notice this, these two are flipped from each other. Would give me what back? And I'm just doing this one because, again, like I said before, it, it works for negatives as well. Okay, and you could even have a negative on top and negative on the bottom. In, in general, it works for any real number. But anyway, since we multiply by the flipped version, we get 1 back. All right, next up we have works for square roots as well. Square root of 7 divided by 3 times the flipped version, 3 over square root of 7. Again, you can think of it as crossing the square root of 7's on the top and bottom, and the 3 on the bottom and 3 on the top. It's just going to give you 1 back. It also works for fractions on top and bottom, which are called complex fractions. But again, they're just numbers. They're real numbers. So if I have 2 thirds on top and 4 ninths on the bottom of this big fraction, and I multiply by the flipped version, so the 4 ninths goes on top and the 2 thirds goes on bottom, well, I kind of gave the answer away, right? The 2 thirds would have to be what's on bottom in order to create the cancelization. And you would end up with 1. And also works for more complex math expressions. These aren't that complex, but just wanted to show you. If I have mn on top and xy on the bottom and I multiplied that to give me 1, I must have what? I must have flipped it, right? So whatever's in here must be the flipped version of that, which is xy over mn. And I wanted to give you an example with 0. Always want to take a look at 0. 0 over 5 times 5 over 0 gives you what? Now, if I work this out mathematically, I'm going to have 0 times 5, if I just multiply the numerators and denominators, times 5 over 0, which gives me 0 over 0. We've talked about this many times. What we generally want to write here is undefined, because there's really more than one number that works for that. OK? And I know a lot of people say 1, and that's fine. I would count that as correct, but we've already talked about before. Uh, when you zero, take 0 and divide by a number or divide by 0, some strange things happen. So. Once again, this is a multiplicative inverse property. In essence, if you start with a fraction and you want to multiply by a number to get 1, all you have to do is flip that fraction and multiply that, and that will always give you 1 back.